welcome to my channel, Learn Math with Miss M. Today we'll be solving ASVAB practice question number two, which is asking us to solve for X and then it's giving us an equation with multiple steps to solve. In this video, I'll walk you through how we solve for X step by step, show you the answer, and then provide some practice problems that you can use to check and see how well you mastered this skill. If this video is helpful for you, drop me a like or subscribe and leave a note in the comments with any other videos you would like to see. Let's get started. The first thing that we wanna do with this problem is figure out what is it asking us to do? This problem is asking us to solve for X. So what does that actually mean? It means that we want to figure out what value or what number for X will make this equation true. An equation is true if it's equal on both sides. That's what makes it an equation. Both sides are equal. They're of the same value. So we're trying to figure out what number equals X and will make this whole equation true. To figure that out, basically it means that we need to get X alone on one side of the equal sign and a number on the other side. And that's gonna tell us what number is equal to X. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is simplify this equation. So. I can see on both sides of this equation, I'm going to need to use the distributive property. So I'm going to multiply three times X and then three times one. That's going to give me three X plus three times one is three is equal to, and I'll do the same thing over here, five times X and then five times negative two, five X minus 10 plus seven, nothing's happening there, so it just gets brought down to the next line. All right, so even though our equation is longer, we've actually simplified it because we were able to get rid of these parentheses here. The next thing I see when I take a look at this problem is that the left side of the equation, three X plus three, can't be simplified anymore. But on the right side, we have this negative 10 and this plus seven. These are both constants. Neither of them have a variable, so we can simplify. Negative 10 plus seven is going to give us negative three, and everything else just comes down. So we have three X plus three is equal to five X minus three. And now we can start using inverse operations to isolate X or figure out what X is equal to. For me personally, I don't really like that I have this negative three over here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do the inverse of subtracting three, which is add three. What I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side because they're equal, they're a balance. So negative three plus three is zero, which means that on this side of the equation, I just have five X. And on the other side, I have three X and three plus three will give me positive six. So now my equation is three X plus six is equal to five X. Here X is all by itself. So I'm gonna get the three X over to this side. The opposite of adding three X is subtracting three X. I'll do it to both sides because equations are a balance. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other, which leaves me with plus six is equal to two X. I'm not all the way done. I still haven't figured out what X is equal to. I know what two X is equal to. So the inverse of multiplying two times X is dividing both sides by two. And that gives me three is equal to X. So my answer is X is equal to three. You could check this by taking a three, substituting it in for X, solving the whole problem and seeing if you get two numbers that are the same, both sides being equal. Next, I'll show you some practice problems so that you can try out this skill on your own. If you want to try these practice problems on your own, pause the video right now, go ahead and give them a try, and then push play to get the answers and see how you did. Here are the answers. How'd you do? If you like this video, give me a like or subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.